If you're already running campaigns in Google Ads, you might already know that there are dedicated columns for video campaigns to use to analyze the performance. While these columns are still really helpful, there's a lot more we can do when we use YouTube Studio to really review performance. There are so many paid and organic and referral reports within YouTube Studio that we can use to collect data to better optimize our video campaigns. So in this video, I'm going to show you four of my favorite top reports that you can use within YouTube Studio to give you deeper information to make better optimization decisions. The first report that I have opened in YouTube Studio Analytics is device type, and you can see it in the top navigation. Depending on how often you use it or how expanded you have your browser on your screen, you may have to go to the more menu to find this one. Now, right away, you could be thinking, this really isn't that special. We can already get device information within Google Ads. This isn't anything new, Joe. I'm not impressed. Well, yes, it's true. You can get device information in a few different ways within Google Ads. YouTube Studio can tell a bigger picture. So what you see on the screen right now is exactly what you would see for your channels on the device type report. The main column on the left is the device type. And there we see the main ones for YouTube, computer, mobile phones, tablets, TVs, and game console. And then we see the comparative metrics for views, watch time, and then average view duration per device. Now within this view, and looking at the columns that we see right here, computers and mobile phone categories are getting the majority of the watch time for our channel. TV screens and game consoles, however, are getting a much higher average view duration. More watch time could mean better engagement. So if we are running ads and we want better engagement, this might encourage us to look at pushing TV devices if my main goal of the campaign is to focus on attention. Now, one thing I want to do is go to this blue plus button right in between the two columns. There we can see we can add another metric to the table. Now, there are a lot of options crossed out. That's because we can't use those additional columns within this specific report. And depending on which reports you go into, you're going to see different options canceled out. But for one example, I'm going to choose card clicks. And all of our same columns are still there. It's all within the same date range. We just have an additional metric. Michelle and I have longer video content. And if you've seen any of our other videos, most likely you come across where we recommend other videos that viewers can click and go to the additional reference video. That is a card that we add to the organic video. And Michelle and I have run TrueView Discovery campaigns for our own videos. And now's the perfect time to show you one of these cards. There you go. Go check out the TrueView Discovery campaign video. Because with TrueView Discovery, you're sending people to the video watch page and you will be paying for that view every single time someone clicks on your TrueView Discovery ad. Now, one of the benefits of those campaigns is that if users go on to watch other videos, like clicking on one of these cards and watching other videos, I don't pay for any of that extra engagement. If you are running TrueView for shopping campaigns, what do you know? There's another card. TrueView for shopping uses shopping cards. And every time someone clicks on those from one of your video ads, those card clicks will also be counted in this column we see on the screen right now. So if your goal is to have people click on those cards, and if you want to optimize towards these deeper forms of engagement with your video campaigns, there we see that almost all of our card clicks are coming from computer and mobile phones for our particular account. And this is just one example of how we can use device type reports with additional segmentation could give me the information I need to only run my campaigns on computer and mobile phones if I want to push deeper engagement like card clicks. If my focus is brand awareness or video views or longer watch times, I'm going to make sure I'm not turning off tablets or TVs which many advertisers do. So it really depends on what the goals of your campaign are, and YouTube Studio can provide deeper device type information than what we can see within Google Ads. The second report that I love to look at is going to be the external sources report. So to find that, first click on traffic source, which we're already in. The left-hand column is going to be your traffic source column, the source of where people are watching the video. It's coming from ads, organic search, so on and so on. But I said this is external sources, so we need to click on the external option. Now this is a client account, so I had to blur a good amount of stuff out, but we see a lot of examples for external sources. We see common sources like Google Search, Gmail, Facebook, Bing, and all the options I had to blur out, because again, it is from a client account, they're actual domains. Other websites that are linking to my YouTube videos. So if other websites or blogs are sharing your video content, which is a lot easier to do if you're allowing people to embed your videos, we can see where the video was shared. So if you have a large enough list of referral sources, you can use this information in a variety of ways. 
One option is to take a list of the valuable external sources that you see based on the information and see if you can use them as managed placement targeting for either your display campaigns or your video campaigns. So since these are URLs, I'm gonna to go to websites and then I can type in an option. While the display network is probably the most common to use website-based targeting, your video ads or your YouTube ads can show up on specific websites if you allow it. We do have more information about that on placement targeting, which you can watch right here. Another way I like to use the list of external sources is to create a custom audience. And to do that, head into Audience Manager within Google Ads, and then go into Custom Audiences. Click on the blue button, and then you can see people who browse types of websites. I highly recommend you make sure you have a list of more than just one website, but I'm just gonna use this as an example, of I can create audience of people who have shown interest or browse websites like this or similar to this URL. And then if we look to the audience insights on the right hand side, I can get some demographic information and look what general topics users like to visit within my entered browsers. And then we can look up what topics this audience may fall in that are related to the URLs I just entered. And we see the first topic is laptops and notebooks, very relevant. I can then use this new custom audience as a targeting option for a variety of display, video, or discovery campaigns. The idea here is if we're seeing consistently good engagement metrics consistently from these domains in YouTube Studio, I may want to test them out in other campaigns to try to reach users in a new way. And this last example is a pretty specific example. It's not as common, but I still wanted to share it. If you answer questions on Quora, Quora allows you to embed videos within your organic posts. So if you have a strong content team or strong SEO team who utilizes this channel, I highly recommend going in, finding recommended questions that are related to your video content, and then they can still watch your video on the Quora platform. Those video views do show up as external sources within YouTube Studio, and then you can tell your content team which videos are performing the best, so then maybe they wanna go out and find additional questions for your best performing videos to try to expand the reach and get more engagement. Again, very specific, but this is a fun one I need to actually start doing more because our watch time on Quora has been very good from an external source. Another one of my favorite views in YouTube Studio Channel Analytics is also within traffic sources, and that's going to be suggested videos. Essentially, this report will show you which videos from other channels are sending traffic to your own videos on your YouTube channel. This is purely a referral or organic play here. You won't get this information within Google Ads. The video titles that you see on the left-hand side are not our videos. Our organic videos appeared as recommended options on the video titles we see in this report. So now that we can ask the question, how can this help our campaigns in Google Ads? So depending on which column is important to you, you can start gathering a list of new placement ideas to test for your video campaigns. This is similar to the strategy that we did with external sources. Because if there are videos from other channels consistently sending traffic to your channel and they have good watch times or higher view durations, you can consider targeting those specific videos or the entire channel with ads. Hopping back into Google Ads, we see some of the direct placement targeting options are YouTube videos or YouTube channels. So let's pretend views is really important to me. I can highlight over this first video, click on the YouTube logo to pop open YouTube, and now I have the URL for this specific video, and then I can clearly see what the channel is. So now when I go into Google Ads, I can paste the URL, and there it is. And if I choose to, I could target that video. Or if I go back, choose the actual YouTube channels, I could try to search for it, but I'm not finding it, and I don't wanna target my own channel. But in your case, you may find that the channel could pop up and you can target any YouTube video on that channel. For now, I'll just have to be happy with that one specific video. So remember, you can target both your YouTube videos and display ads on specific YouTube channels placements. I know it's easy to assume I'm talking about just video ads, but your display ads can also appear on YouTube videos as well. So even if you don't have video creative to run YouTube campaigns, you can still try to place your display ads on any top performing video placements. And that is why I really like the suggested videos report within your traffic sources. And yes, it really, really helps if you have a strong organic YouTube presence. Everything I showed you so far lived within the advanced mode up here within YouTube Studio. But the last thing I wanna show you lives within your main channel analytics dashboard and I already have engagement highlighted. If I scroll down, we get to key moments. In this area, I use for both TrueView Discovery as well as my in-stream ads. 
for TrueView Discovery, I wanna make sure I'm engaging that user as long as possible because we're paying for that view every time. So then I will frequently rely on the key moments report to research the best video within a certain category or find out how to improve my future video ads. Similar thought with InStream. Even though the length of those videos are typically much shorter, I wanna see how that user is engaging with that specific video ad. Because key moments will show you how users are typically watching important areas of your video. So in the categories right here, Right now we're looking at how the intros are performing. We can look at continuous segments and they're giving us a few examples where the majority of viewers don't drop off. These two videos have really strong segments where people are watching it for, in this case, at least three minutes and 30 seconds straight. If we wanna see what that content is, I can click and play and watch from that specific moment to get a better understanding of what is engaging with users and give me new ideas of new video creative to test. And then there's spikes moments in the video where audience retention dramatically increases, and then the flip side, moments within a video where audience retention dramatically decreases. When you review these numbers for every video, you get a good understanding of what moments in that video may need improvement. So from this area, we use it for video planning, whether it's organic or through paid. I would say especially paid, because I would say the biggest part of a video campaign succeeding is the video creative. If you wanna get users to keep being engaged, if you wanna get them to click through to your website or click on your cards, you need to have strong creative that's gonna make them pay attention. The columns we get in Google Ads are still valuable, they're still important, but hopefully you can see why YouTube Studio gives us a much deeper layer and it gives us new options that we just cannot get within Google Ads. This is especially true if you have a strong organic YouTube presence, you can use that information to improve your overall video marketing efforts and even other paid campaign types we can do on Google Ads. Try to see the larger picture of what's actually working or maybe not working from your entire YouTube marketing strategy to either make informed decisions or give you new ideas of what can be tested or optimized. I only gave you four examples, but you can go down a large rabbit hole within YouTube Studio. So hopefully this gave you the encouragement to go start digging in yourself. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you wanna see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.